and welcome to the C3 Kids Studio, where this month we're learning all about how to drop the act. I'm your host, Lisa, but you probably knew that already, right? I mean, yes, I'm behind this amazing mask, but I'm guessing you already knew it was me. My mask each week isn't exactly a disguise, right? But in a few moments, we will be joined by someone in disguise. Before we get to that, let's go over our Life App definition. This month, we're talking all about the Life App of Integrity choosing to be truthful in whatever you say and do. God wants us to be truthful, and He can help us live truthfully. And when we do that, we can stay close to Him. We'll hear more about that in our story today, but right now, it's time to see if you can figure out who is behind the mask in this week's episode of The Masked Leader. Let's meet our contestant. Are you ready? This week, I'm joined by The Unicorn. Okay, hello, here you have it. As you can see, our C3 Kids leader is dressed as a unicorn. But do you know who is really behind that mask? We'll ask them to drop the act shortly. First, let's see if we can figure out who it is. Listen in to these clues. So my first clue is that I like to spend time with my two younger sisters and my dog. My second clue is that I like to play my viola. My third clue is that when I was in second grade, I lost my favorite pencil. All right, do you think you know who it is? Why don't we find out? Help me at home by shouting along. Ready? Drop the act. Drop the act. Drop the act. Drop the act. Oh, yay, it's Rachel. Welcome, Rachel. We're so glad to have you here on The Masked Leader in our C3 We're Kids glad to studio. Be here. Thank you so much. Um, and that's an awesome costume, by the way. Thank you. Yeah, it's awesome. I love it. Hey. Um, we have another game that we'd love to play. This time, they've been guessing about, you know, clues, but this time, you and I have some guessing to do. Ooh. Guessing about whether something really is what it seems. Are you up for playing? Sure. All right, let's do it. All right, Rachel, so this game is all about how something here isn't exactly as it appears. You see, there's chocolate on two different plates. Well, maybe chocolate. One of these plates has real chocolates, and one of them does not. And we need to determine which is which. That's so, a tough decision. Yeah. So when you look at these plates, what do you think? Which plate do you think is the real chocolate, and hmm. which one is the imposter? I'm going to say that the chocolate on your plate is the real chocolate, and the chocolate on my plate is a fake. Okay. You know what? That's exactly what I thought, too. Hmm. I feel like this is real, and that one's fake. Now comes the best part. We get to try them and figure out what's real and what's not. Which one do you want to try? Do you want to try the fake or the real or I'm what we think is fake? Real. You want to try the real? I do. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and try what we think is the fake. And I have no idea what it is. Let's do it. Let's see. I was right, I think. <gasps> you got the chocolate and I got granola. I like granola. How's that? Good. Yummy. Mmm. Good stuff. Yeah. Hey, thanks for playing. This is fun. I could play this all day. Yeah. <laughs> well, that was a fun game, wasn't it? Yes. Chocolate and granola, two of my favorite things. And I couldn't tell the difference at first. But Yeah, me neither. Anyway, well, we've got a friend of ours from C3 Kids who's joining us today via video and they have a costume that they'd like to share, but it's a little different than the masked leader. See, they're not wearing their costume yet. They're gonna give you and I some clues, and we have to guess which costume we think is their favorite. Uh, do you wanna play? Sure. All right, let's do it. Hello, my name is Isaac, and I am in second grade. Here are three clues about my favorite costume. It is black, it has a mask, I fight bad guys in the night. Can you guess my favorite costume? Black. He fights bad guys in the night. And what was the other one? He has a mask. Oh, he has a mask. Yes. Who do you think it is? I'm going to go with Darth Vader. Ooh, okay. I was thinking Batman. Does he fight bad guys in the night? I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. Well? Oh, wait. Darth Vader's the bad guy. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. Well? Let's find out who it is. Here I am. 
Did you guess right? I'm a ninja. A ninja? Well, obviously neither of us guessed that. Nope. But it was a pretty cool costume, yes, huh? Yes, it was. It was yeah. really cool. I love ninjas. That was pretty amazing. Well, hey, the kids are going to hear their Bible story in just a moment. And I was wondering if the unicorn might be up for revealing this week's bottom line. Of Feel like doing it? Of course would, yes. Awesome. Go for it. Okay. The bottom line for this week is being truthful with God keeps you close to Him. All right. Woohoo! Well, guys, your countdown's on its way. Unicorn, thanks for being here today. And you guys have a great week. Hello, everybody. It is so wonderful to be back, even though it's just on camera. But I'm so excited that I get to teach you the moves to some really cool songs that we're going to do. So the first song is called Wonderful. And I hope you all remember it because it's a song that reminds us how amazing and how God is. That everything he made is good and how awesome and wonderful everything he, he does. So some of the moves are we're going to shout, right? Because God is amazing. Then we're going to celebrate big arms because God is amazing. And I want you to show me how wonderful he really is. Wonderful, I hope you guys enjoy it.
Bible. It's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how He created us and loves us so much that He made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of 1 John, chapter 1, verse 9. One of Jesus' closest friends, the Apostle John, shared important words from God in one of his letters. But God is faithful and fair. If we confess our sins, He will forgive our sins. He will forgive every wrong thing we have done. He will make us pure. Let's see how this truth might play out today. Tori could barely contain her excitement when she showed her dad the small plastic rectangle with her face on it, her brand new driver's license. See, I can drive myself now. If you had a car. Mom said I can borrow her car some days. If you pay for gas. If I pay for gas. Cell phone. Phone off while I'm driving. Tori held up her phone and shut it off. That's right. And no passengers, no driving after 9 p.m., full stop at every stop sign, music at a moderate volume. I got it. I guess you do. So can I borrow mom's car to go play tennis with Keisha? Please? Be home by nine. Thanks, dad. Even though Tori had been driving with her mom and dad for months now, her stomach did a flip when she first started the car. Driving carefully out of the driveway, her hands white knuckled on the steering wheel for the first mile until she pulled into the spot in the tennis courts at the high school. She was almost relaxed. Her best friend, Keisha, waved. <laughs> nice park job. Tori hopped out and checked her spacing. Yeah, okay, I'm a little crooked, but there's no one else here. The two friends played for more than an hour before Tori checked time. Oops, gotta get home. By the time Tori had stowed out her gear and fiddled with the temperature controls, Keisha was already gone. Here goes. As Tori backed the car out of the spot, she reached over to adjust the radio. I cannot deal with mom's music. Oh no. Tori braked fast. She put the car in park and hopped out. She had just hit the light pole and left a small dent in the bumper. It's not very big. Tori reached for her phone to call dad, but she had already turned off her phone for the drive. I I'll just tell them when I get home. Tori stayed tense the whole way home. Oh, they'll never let me borrow the car again. But it's just a small dent, and mom's car is really old anyway. Dad was working on his Jeep in the garage when Tori pulled in. Hey, sweetie, how was it? Tori opened up her mouth to tell dad about the dent, but she couldn't seem to do it. Fine, great. My serve's getting a lot better. Tori avoided mom too. She tried to go straight to her room and read, but she couldn't focus. I might as well go to bed. Most evenings, Tori used a gratitude app on her phone as a reminder to thank God for the good things in her day. Uh, Friday, let's see. But Tori didn't want to think about her day or talk to God at all. Finally, she turned off the light, but even so, she couldn't fall asleep. Next morning, she came down to find dad making French toast. Maple syrup or strawberries and whipped cream. Both, where's mom? She went out to get groceries. Should be back any minute. As Tori sat down to her favorite breakfast, memories of the dented bumper started flooding back. I guess I'm not really that hungry right now. The garage door opened. Mom shouldered her way inside, carting heavy groceries. Would you believe it? Someone dinged my bumper in the parking lot and took off. Tori's heart sank. She wished she could simply disappear. Did you see it happen? No, and they didn't leave a note, hit and run. I'll take a look. Uh, Mom? Mom glanced up and saw Tori. Hi, Tor. I didn't mean to rain on your morning. What's up? Uh, nothing. I, I mean, I, I'm i gonna go out and rake some leaves. That would be super helpful. Rakes against the back wall. Tori couldn't meet Mom's eyes when she walked out the door. She raked as hard and as fast as she could, but she couldn't sweep away what happened. It's not like I lied, ex exactly. Oh, who am I kidding? Unlocking her phone, 
Tori scrolled through her messages for a message from her small group leader, Lisa, that she'd sent weeks ago. Wanted to share. Oh, here's the verse. But God is faithful and fair. If we confess our sins, He will forgive our sins. He will forgive every wrong thing we have done. He will make us pure. Tori scanned the verse again and sighed. She dropped her rake and plopped right in the middle of her leaf pile. So, um, God, I really messed up. I mean, you know all about it, but I dented mom's car and I hid the truth. I lied. I'm really sorry. As Tori lay in the scratchy leaves, staring up at the bright blue sky, she felt a sense of peace for the first time all day. Thank you, God. After a few minutes, Tori scrambled to her feet, brushed the leaves off, and went towards the house. Mom, Dad, there's something I have to tell you. Tori knew she'd be paying to fix the car, and she might lose driving privileges for a while, but it was worth the cost to know she wasn't hiding the truth anymore. Maybe once in a while You cover up an itty bitty lie with a big fat smile But an itty bitty lie still lying that's not your style But stick to the middle of the path from mile to mile Maybe you want it real bad so you'd say okay. Maybe you make the promise but then you break Then you're gonna get stuck It might feel like a little lie But it's gonna catch up Do what you say you're gonna do You'll be on your way up Said you're on your way up You'll be living straight up friends do and everybody's still a good friend who sticks like glue cause everybody did what they said and everybody was true maybe you wanted it but you didn't take it maybe you promised and then you didn't break it maybe you Then you're gonna get stuck It might feel like a little lie But it's gonna catch up Do what you say you're gonna do You'll be on your way up Said you're on your way up You'll be living straight up If you move too far to the side Then you're gonna get stuck It might feel like a little lie But it's gonna catch up do what you say you're gonna do, you'll be on your way up Said you're on your way up You can choose to be true Not just to everybody else, but true to you You can choose to be true Not just to everybody else, but true to you True to you